Hi, I'm Taylor. It's uh, been a while since I put out an actual like edited video. Sorry, it's I've been putting my whole workshop together. And honestly, this whole building has been a dream of mine for years, uh, but it's been a bear to get it off the ground, which I'm now realizing probably would have made a bunch of really good video content, but I didn't film that. Oh well, but I filmed this. This is my miter station. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through how I made this bad boy. So let's just dive in. I'll show you kind of the features of it, um, show you how I made it kind of step by step, loosely, and, uh, and then I'll kind of talk about, now that I've had it for a while, some pros and cons of the decisions I made in building it, as well as what I'd probably change if I were to build it again. Um, if you've watched any of the Bourbon Moth YouTube video and seen his miter station build, You'll note there's a lot of similarities. I definitely took a lot of inspiration from that and did some tweaks of my own. But yeah, let's dive into the features and go from there. First up, uh, first and foremost is the miter saw. Wouldn't be a very good miter station without a miter saw. Uh, here I'm using the Bosch sliding one. I've uh, been really happy with it, really no complaints. Um, other than of course the dust collection, but we'll again get to that towards the end of the video. Over on this side of the miter station, I've got my whiteboard up top. I don't think it's going to live here long term because I'd love to have some storage up against this wall instead. Uh, I also have on the top here a T-track for a stop block. Um, I like that more than having necessarily a fence running the whole way, just because this leaves up the tabletop when I'm not making cuts for a lot more, um, let's be honest, for me to just put crap on top of it. And then we've got the majority of the drawers over here as well. More drawers underneath the miter saw, and I've got a couple drawers at the very end there. And then on this end of the miter station, we've got my sanding machines. Um, got my belt sander and my disc slash other belt sander, mostly because this is where they fit in my shop. They're pushed back far enough so that they are actually pretty much dead in line with the fence of my miter saw. And then this uh, garbage bin here is supposed to be for offcuts and scraps, and I basically immediately filled it. So I need to figure out either a more efficient way of discarding scraps or a better place to store them while I continue to grow that pile, because I don't have fires in my fireplace often enough to burn all of this. So let's run down of the features of the miter station. Let's go ahead and run down how I built it. As with any good shop project, this started with a big pile of sheet goods that I needed to cut down to size. So with grace and aplomb, I used my track saw to break down the big sheets into more manageable pieces. Now, I know, I know, this is like the second festival tool you've seen in the shop with some guy on YouTube and his fancy new wood shop, but please don't hate me. This is my hobby, not my job. And I don't golf, so this is where I spend my money. Uh, instead of, you know, buying expensive clubs and blaming them for my terrible swing and buying nicer ones, I instead make crappy things out of wood, blame my tools, and then buy nicer tools. Anyways, after some questionable cuts on the table saw, I next brought it over and started marking out the notches for the toe kicks. Now, some folks like to build the toe kicks as like a separate frame that the boxes will end up sitting on top of. I've just never done it that way, and I didn't think about it until I was editing this video. It's probably easier. I don't know. Give it a shot, and you can tell me. Once I had all the sides cut, I set them up on the wall to kind of get an idea of the spacing for each of the cabinets. I didn't have measurements ahead of time, so I used some clamps and test scraps to start taking measurements and cutting strips of ply to make the what are, bracers, spacers, I, I don't know, whatever these strips that go in between would be called. Anyways, with those measurements, it was back to the table saw to cut those strips to be about two and a half inches wide, enough to fit some pocket screws. And then I used a crosscut sled with a one, two, three block as a stop block and cut them to the lengths that I had spaced out along the wall. For the areas with drawers, the widths were fairly arbitrary, but the cavity for the dust extraction needed to, well, fit the dust extractor. So I took the pieces I cut for that opening over to the wall, clamped them in place, and checked the fit. 
And it's a good thing I did that too, because surprise, surprise, I didn't measure the width correctly. I forgot the stinking wheels are wider than the body. No, remeasuring isn't suddenly going to make them fit. Yep, that's right. Just shrug and go cut new strips. So I went and did exactly that, cut new strips, and lo and behold, the duster tractor magically fits. And there was much celebrating. So, with the spacing decided, it was time to start assembling the cabinets. It means it's time for pocket screws. I'm going to spare making you watch me drill like a hundred holes here and just cut to assembly in a moment, but I was really glad to have this particular Craig jig for the drilling process. For assembly, it was honestly just a matter of using clamps to hold the stretchers in place while I drove the pocket screws in. The first few times were a little awkward as I figured out the right way to get the clamps in place so that the boards wouldn't shift as I drove the screws and the cabinet didn't cave in on itself, but eventually I got the hang of it and batched out the whole set. Each carcass got four bracers side to side, that's two in the back and then two on the top, which is plenty to keep it square. I found that putting the back two in and then flipping the whole assembly over to screw in the top two worked pretty darn well. And just like that, the frame is complete. I repeated this a few more times and suddenly it was a whole row of cabinet frames. For the carcasses getting drawers, I also installed these runners using pin nails and glue to install a bottom shelf. I can't say it's fully necessary, uh, what with drawers getting installed later and all, but you know, if you're gonna do cubbies instead of drawers, you would definitely still do this step. Um, otherwise, maybe you can get away with just another strip or two again, like on the top and the rear. Again, I haven't tried it that way, so you'll have to tell me if it works. Uh, but with those runners in place, you saw I just threw the bottom on there and then screwed it back in place. Then I was able to move the cabinet carcasses over to near their final destination. But first I needed to make sure I measured out the shelf for the miter saw itself. To do that, I measured the height of the miter saw's cutting surface and then measured that gap down from the top of the carcass. Here I placed some runners that another top will sit on. And since both that top and the tops I'm using for the rest of the workstation are the same thickness of three quarters of an inch, I don't have to do any fancy math here and subtractions. I just move it down the width of the miter saw and set a topper on it. I then use the same stretcher technique I used on the cabinet carcasses to attach the miter saw stand to the rest of the cabinets. A few screws here, planting a board there, and we have ourselves a place to put the miter saw. And that completed basically the entire framing of the left side of the miter station. So I shuffled this over into place and prepared to mount it. First, I used a level to make sure all of the faces are lined up because the last thing we need is some wonky cabinets. Uh, but then I clamped each of the carcasses together and used screws to join them permanently. I used a couple in the front as well as several in the rear of each carcass, and then I also screwed the entire assembly to the wall. And then I repeated this entire process we just watched to create the right bank of drawers, uh, except for it was even easier this time because it was just a single carcass and then two stretchers over the span that the garbage can needed so that I could slide that underneath there. Before finalizing and screwing these cabinets to the wall as well, I used shims and a level to make sure everything was nice and level all the way across the left and right sections. And as you can see, look at that bubble right in the middle. Oh, beautiful. The next logical step to me was to start working on the tops. Here I'm using MDF as my topper. Um, MDF usually on its own is something I avoid in the shop, but here it's going to be great because I'm going to be covering it in laminate. And MDF is nice and flat and heavy out of the box, so it works perfect here. The only hiccup I had in putting these tops on 
was marking around this post. So I just butted the piece up against it and marked out where I needed to cut out and used a jigsaw to cut the requisite hole and shimmy the hole top in place. It was a pretty quick process, but it did take a little bit of trial and error. But overall, going for the finesse and sneaking up on the fit was definitely worth it for the moment right here when I was able to just set it down and slide it forward. Now at this point, you probably could call this done as the majority of the core constructions complete aside from maybe a couple shelves, but I wanted to kick things up a notch. So I did something I hadn't tried before and ordered some hardwood online. This pile comes from Woodworkers Source and no, they aren't a sponsor. I mean, look at my view count. There's just no way. Uh, but overall, I was really impressed with the whole service. Prices seemed fair, I suppose, and uh, it sure was easier than loading up the lumber myself. Here I ordered some poplar, since this is shop furniture after wall, and I did get a little bit of maple to spice things up around the countertops, but you'll see more of that in a bit. So I took a couple minutes to set up the proto miter station and got to work figuring out the face turns for my drawers. Here, actually, a whiteboard came in really handy. So you see me throwing some numbers up on the board. I wouldn't recommend trying to copy them exactly since obviously they're based on my very specific setup and how my cabinets end up coming together. But you can see how I've broken down a cut list based on the actual constructed frames. Um, and if I had trusted my measurements more, perhaps I could have had this cut list ready to go before I even started construction. But as you've seen, this was a bit more of a fluid project than that. So with cut list in hand, or er, on board? I don't know. But I got to breaking down the rough lumber. I'll spare you the full milling process, but hey, at least we're gonna get some action shots of the miter station before it's even done. The lumber I ordered was surfaced on three sides anyways, so I was mostly able to skip the planing and joining. Um, just did rough cuts to length and then ripped them down on the table saw and then went back to the miter saw to trim to final length. I know I did a whole show and tell on that whiteboard about uh, doing the precise measurements, but I still just use cabinets for the direct reference. And in lieu of a stop block, I drew a mark on the MDF for repeated cuts on the face frame. It wasn't quite as precise, but I don't know, it worked well enough and I was going to cover it with laminate. With all the pieces cut, I laid them on the floor and used spacers to keep everything even. And now that I knew where everything was going to go, it was time to join the boards. I could have kept going with my pocket hole tradition here, but hey, I overpaid for this domino, so you can bet your ass that I'm going to overuse it. Anyways, I quickly mortised out the holes on each board based on the marks I had made when they were laid out on the floor, and courtesy of the domino, I was able to quickly pop the whole assembly together. Again, the domino is by no means a required tool in the shop, but there are certain places like this where it just speeds up the process in a way I really appreciate. After a test fit, making sure that uh, everything was coming together nicely, I put glue on all the joints, clamped it together and let it sit for a couple hours to cure up. If you don't have enough big long clamps, you can just as easily glue this up in a few sub assemblies, which just means more waiting between each step. Or you can do what I did, which is daisy chain some clamps together in some sort of unholy abomination mega clamp. And I'm sure there's a bunch of good reasons not to do that, but it worked, so I'm probably going to do it again in the future. As usual, before attaching the face clamps, there is always the final step of sanding, which is never the fun part of a job, but man, it really does make a huge difference, even in shop furniture. And with the face frame all nice and smooth, though, it was time to get it onto the cabinets. For this, I used some glue and some pin nails. Originally, I'd been considering painting the cabinets, but even without paint, these nail holes are so small I can barely see them, and drawers are going to be coming up most of the face frame anyways. The face frames for the other sections of the cabinets were the same process as before, but even simpler, since there was only one bank of drawers. 
and then underneath the miter saw itself, I used an extra wide board for the top face frame so that the drawers could all stay roughly aligned without me having to have a tiny drawer right underneath the saw itself. Speaking of drawers, let's speed run how those were installed and built. I'm using the Rockler undermount slides here. So far, having not installed that many drawers in my life, undermount slides are quickly becoming my favorite. They're easy to install on the cabinet and even easier to get the drawers in and out. The drawers just rest on the slides themselves and these little clippy things are attached to the base of the drawer. They also let you easily make adjustments to the drawers once they're in, which is super convenient. I'll link to the Bourbon Moth video I follow to get these installed, but the short version is you set the slide on the face frame, leaving about an eighth of an inch gap in the front. And then the rear of the slides are installed in a vertical support piece, which uh, to do that, I just measured out the gaps in the face frame spacing and then screwed on the little metal support brackets. From there, it's as easy as screwing that back piece into the rear of the cabinet, popping the slide in place, and then locking them down with a screw or two into the face frame. Easy peasy. Installing the slides first too also makes it really easy to determine the exact width of our drawers. All we have to do is measure the gap between the two slides, because that's going to dictate the width of the front of the drawer. For the actual drawer construction itself, I'm going to gloss over most of it here, but here's some b-roll of me cutting wood. The drawers are very simple. The front and rear faces are the length we just measured on the slides, and then the sides themselves were 15 inches deep, because that's the depth of the slides I bought. So I cut out the appropriate rectangles using the track saw and the table saw, and then a half of an inch from the bottom, I cut a dado about a quarter of an inch thick to slide the bottoms of the drawers into. The main unique bit about undermount drawer slides is that you do need to notch out the backs of the drawers so that the slides can actually, well, you know, slide underneath. Um, the measurements for those notches are in the instructions for the slides themselves and are probably a touch different from different brands, but here it was just a half inch by I think like three quarters of an inch and I used my bandsaw to quickly knock those out. And then finally, I just used some glue and pin nails to put all these drawers together. Here I use some pre-finished plywood to save me some time on sanding and finishing, but I'm still debating whether or not it was worth that little bit of extra cost. The last step for the drawer slides, other than putting the clips on, is to draw out two small holes where the back of the slides hook into the drawer. Uh, that prevents it from tipping. Now you could measure these out or buy a jig, um, or you can just pop the drawer on the slides and bang the drawer a few times against those hooks, and then drill where the whole hooks dent into the wood. And then finally, you install the clips on the bottom of the drawer by screwing them in so that the front of those clips are flush with the front of the drawer. And then you can just pop them in place. Ooh, satisfying click. Oh, look at that! Okay, we're in the home stretch now, so let's go on to how I made the drawer faces. Here, they're pretty simple frame and panel drawer faces using three quarter inch poplar and half inch MDF. Again, I was originally gonna paint this, hence the MDF, but then I remembered how much I hate painting things. So I put the frames together using a pretty standard mortise and tenon setup, cutting a quarter inch groove down the center of each part of the frame for both the MDF and the joint and then I cut a tenon to match on the long sides of the frame. Here I'm using my tenoning jig. You could do this as well with a tall uh, table saw fence attachment, but this is a new favorite tool I have in the shop that I inherited from my grandpa. And then I used a one, two, three block again as a stop so that I'm not accidentally having any cutoffs get pinched between the blade and the fence. Then by cutting back and forth along the table saw, I cut a groove around the outside edges of the MDF. 
The nice part here is that this is going to mean one side of the MDF is flush with the back of the frame, and then the other side will be one quarter inch inset from the front of the frame, creating a nice reveal. And then I just popped the sides on and glued the tenons, and suddenly I had drawer faces. Attaching the drawers was pretty simple. I used double-sided tape to hold them in place while I lined them up with some marks I had put on the face frames earlier. Uh, here I just wanted to have a quarter inch overlap on all sides. And with the double-sided tape, I was able to pull out the drawer and drive screws in from behind. That would permanently affix the drawer faces on there. I was pretty happy with how things had turned out at this point, but opening the drawers was still a little bit tricky. So I just marked out and drilled holes in the front to attach some drawer pulls I had picked up at the hardware store. The process was pretty simple. I just marked out the correct gap and then spaced it on the drawer face right in the middle. Then I drilled through and pushed the bolts through to screw them in. It was a little tricky finding the right size of bolt though, so keep an eye out for that. To finish off the wood focus part of this build, I cut some one inch strips of maple to border the MDF tops to help avoid things like chip out from having the exposed MDF edges. And again here I just used some pin nails and wood glue. Then to fully protect the wood surface I used contact cement to adhere the Formica laminate to the top. The laminate is great because things like finish and glue wipe right off and they don't stick, and it's plenty tough. Working with contact cement was interesting. Make sure your work area is well ventilated because it stinks, and the MDF really soaks it up, so I ended up doing two coats. But after applying a full even coat to the underside of the laminate as well, and let them both dry for about 15 minutes, they were both dry to the touch. Then I found that using dowels like this to help keep the laminate lifted made the installation much easier to align everything. I just worked out from the center, rolling it on using a J roller, and making sure every part of it was fully pressed down. Then to finish up, I used a trim router to form a chamfer along the maple border, which also cut the laminate flush with the rest of the top. I will say, this was a fairly messy process, so you're gonna wanna make sure you're wearing all of your protection gear, a mask, glasses, and everything. And after that, all that's left is final touches. So I routed in a spot for some T-track parallel to the miter saw fence, and that let me use a stop block And then off screen, I applied some finish. And with that, the whole thing is built. All right, that just about does it. That's how I built my miter station. Um, I'm really happy with how the whole thing turned out. It's been a absolute delight to use so far, but there are a couple things I think I would change if I were to build this again. So let's run through those. Uh, first and foremost, I had to scoot the saw forward a fair bit to clear all of my sanding tools that I have over here. So there's two adjustments I made. One, I'd probably end up making these a little bit deeper or even just have the toppers of this be a little bit deeper so that I've got more support. It's not that I've ended up needing that much more support. It's more of a peace of mind and I think just it looks off balance here. Very minor thing. Um, the second adjustment I'll make, and this is still doable but I haven't had a chance yet, is some sort of dust collection shroud to catch all the dust because this hose connection setup that they have built into these Bosch saws is not enough. And I don't think there's really a lot of saws out there that have great dust collection just from these little bibs. So uh, I'm gonna be looking into the Shop Nation attachments he sells, but also probably building some sort of shroud and better dust collection setup overall. And then the third thing uh, would be fewer drawers. Um, frankly, one, building this, I've learned, I don't like building drawers. It's super tedious and really boring, and it's just a bunch of boxes. Um, and second, 
Uh, I just, I haven't been filling them up with much stuff because I find in general, unless I go and get my label maker out here, which I'm gonna have to do, drawers are where things just go to die. Uh, I've been, you know, watching a lot of Adam Savage's tested videos, talking about his workshop setup, and I really like the idea of, you know, being able to see the tools you need, being able to see things that you're gonna be grabbed regularly, and uh, drawers make that more difficult. So that's why I wanna start putting more storage up on the walls for things I grab often. Drawers are nice, but it, yeah, I just, I find myself losing things or being reticent to put things in drawers in the first place because I'm worried I'm never gonna see them again. Uh, but if I was gonna build it again, yeah, I'd probably be more cubbies, fewer drawers, maybe doors instead of drawers. But overall, I'm extremely happy with how this whole project turned out. So those are kind of the adjustments I'd make. That's how I've made the whole setup. And uh, I don't know, if you have questions, throw them in the comments. I don't know, I'm still new to this YouTube thing. So thanks for checking it out and see you next project.